data telling us? What are all these noises in the economy saying? Uh, some economists now suggesting that there could be, unless things turn around and we see some better stats coming through, uh, it could be pointing to a recession, which is two quarters of economic contraction. And we've already seen a contraction in the first quarter. Those figures for the second quarter, not out yet. I'm joined by Mike Schisler from economist.co.coza. Thank you for being with us, uh, Mike, as always. Can we start with the banks serve data yesterday. You were commenting on that, involved in that. That is, uh, let's just clarify, the volume and value of banking transactions. So anyone who's paying for anything in the economy. That's right. It, it, it uh, takes the uh, um, stuff that goes through the interbank system between banks in South Africa. And in real terms, that uh, declined on a quarterly basis. It was barely a, a positive on a, a sort of um, a year ago basis, 0.2%. And what is worrying about it is that the, the news isn't getting better. It was looking better at the beginning of the year, mm. but we ended up with a recession, and now it's starting to look worse. And I think it is of concern because we know that it is a very much like the coincident indicator, a good indication of GDP growth. It might be out by a month or so, but we think it is uh, certainly a very good indicator of currently what's happening on the ground. So that, I believe, is the biggest drop or something in five years. So the quarterly that drop was the biggest, yes. So that on its own pointing possibly to a recession? That on its own points to a very like, good likelihood of a recession, yes. But we must also remember we don't uh, look at the foreign transactions, the imports and the exports. So that part, you know, obviously is done through the SWIFT system yeah. in banking terms. And also you have things like where we estimate agricultural production, which we also then don't see through the banking system. But in general, I would say, you know, if you're looking at uh, six or seven out of the eight quarters, you'll be pretty uh, accurate. Oh dear, because this, this is serious for South Africa. I mean, we need growth and, and you're talking about a possible recession. Yes, I think uh, I'm falling on the side of a recession now. I think there's a, a, a lot of other evidence in. The PMIs, for example, are back below 50 um, uh, for manufacturing. Uh, the one that's a bit broader is not uh, uh, above that, uh, is, is above 50, but barely. Mm. So that's showing us a, a very slow. And then we have things like the petrol price, which is very, very high. And we do know when the petrol price is that high, because we have to travel to work in cars very often, we don't have a good public transport system. So we sit with people where they have to cut on other goods. So you'll probably have to take note of what the retail sales are going to tell us next week, Wednesday, when they come out for May. But I think it's going to be very important how that and the June retail sales and wholesale sales come in. So this is very bleak. Is it any uh, concession that, that mining and manufacturing data are today better than expected? Let, let's start with mining. What, what do you think of those numbers? Mining was definitely better than expected. Both were. But mining would still need a 3.8% growth for next month to avoid mining going into a second contraction. So it's unlikely, it's happened uh, three times out of the last 24 times, yeah. uh, 24 months that that's happened. So I think the likelihood that mining is in a recession is very strong. Manufacturing on the other hand, which is a bit of a bigger sector, it needs a slight decline. So it looks more positive for manufacturing, which is what I think holding everybody back from saying this is going into a sort of recession. So you actually need a small decline in June in manufacturing to have a manufacturing recession. So manufacturing looks a lot more positive. Um, certainly, I think uh, the, the, the data that came in after, you know, some of the data was adjusted from previous months. So manufacturing really looks a lot better than I think mm. we thought it would. And uh, so on. But the problem is that if you have a flat manufacturing and you have a big decline in mining, um, let's say everything's equal and the same numbers come out, then you're still going to have just barely, but uh, a, a negative between those two. We keep on saying, though, that mining uh, no longer contributes the same to GDP, although it's important for exports, manufacturing, uh, but in the doldrums. 
well, what does our economy hinge on? What are the important uh, sectors? Like you're talking about retail, finance. What well, look, finance is the biggest sector. Government is a big sector. Retail and wholesale and hotels are a big sector. There's no doubt. And then ma ma manufacturing is the fourth biggest sector. But I think we must also realize mining is the biggest buyer uh, very often from many of our manufacturing sectors. It is also mm. a big buyer of services, whether it is transport services or security services. Mm. The it consumes towns around mining. Yes, and it buys a lot of electricity. So, you know, the knock-on impact of your primary sectors is much bigger very often. And that's where the big swings are. So you get big swings in agriculture and big swings in, in mining. And last year, for example, if it wasn't for those two small sectors growing very strongly, we would have had zilt, naught, mm -hmm. nothing, growth. So that shows you how that 8% of the economy can help the rest of the economy. This year, it could be the other way around because you had very strong agriculture, very strong mining. Now you end up with a very big negative on the mining and negative on the agriculture, although we don't know how it looks in the second quarter uh, agriculture yet. But the point is those sectors are very big swing sectors mm. and they buy a lot from the other sectors and produce the inputs into things. So mining will produce iron ore, which becomes steel. Steel becomes a fence or part of a building. And so it goes on. So it's the start of the value chain very often. So, so what you're saying, uh, in, in conclusion, is that the end of the drought, which we cheered, um, the political changes, which many financial players cheered, uh, the, the fact that we're no longer being downgraded by rating agencies, uh, changes in SOEs, none of these things are, are good enough to make us grow. I think they are, but they take a long time. For example, you change a board, the board has to change part of the management. The policy of that new management has to come in, take in effect, uh, so on. So I think we were a bit naive as a country to think that just changing the leadership, you know, you're going to change everything. I think we're still hampered a bit, and this is a big ship. So I'm still positive that we'll get uh, a, a turnaround, but do we get the turnaround in the second quarter or in the third or perhaps even the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And that is the concern at the moment. And I think the rating agencies are still looking over our shoulder. I don't think we should underestimate that impact. Well, well the one of the things they're concerned about is a lack of growth. We need growth. We need tax money coming in. We need to pay for all these priorities in South Africa. So the expectations were 1.7%. Uh, is, is that vaguely possible if we hit a recession? Could we come out and still hit that I, or I, is that I, gone? I think 1.7% I think is now uh, probably not going to happen. We're looking at about 1.3% or so. So it's going to be similar to last year. Um, these are the comma points that matter. And the fact of the matter is, as people, our population is growing at 1.7%. So anything 1.7 and below, we either we're either getting poor. poorer or we're not getting, going anywhere. So we need that extra growth. And I always say, if you want to start uh, making inroads into unemployment, I think a good rule of thumb is you must grow at double your population rate. So we should be growing at 3.4. And to really make inroads, triple or quadruple that. Oh, we can only dream. Thank you for explaining what's going on uh, in reality. Thank you very much, Mark Schisler from economist.coza.